here we go. Well, hello there, you amazing, amazing, beautiful, wonderful people. It's Thursday, it's Thursday. And this is video one of two. Two today, because it is Hayden's birthday. Happy birthday to him, happy birthday to him. 11 today, doesn't time fly? Anyway, so two videos. We're going to be talking about Michael Adario. He'd done a video, and the link to that video will be in the description of this video, and I suggest you go and watch it. I suggest you go and watch it, because it's talking about smurfing. Smurfing. Yes, that's it. Those little blue little fuckers who run around doing magic and stuff. Was one of them called... Is someone called Gargamel in that? Like an old guy? Yeah, I think so. What's smurfing got to do with the Idaho 4Ks, I hear you say? I hear you say, well, look, I'm going to shorten it down. I'm going to scram it into a little... I say shorten it down. That video is actually quite short. Maybe I'll simplify it. So, look, smurfing is when you have people, like they get young people who work for people who do trafficking. And I don't mean, like, that sort of trafficking. Stop, come this way. No, you stop and all that way. I mean the narcotic style traffic and the bad stuff. Bad, naughty stuff. And they utilise these people, like youngsters, people, and they get them to help launder their money. Launder, laundering. Do you know what that means? It means cleaning their money. Where they'll get it from a nefarious source, but they'll get these people to, to, to put it in banks, in small little bits. So it doesn't flag the IRS over in um, the US or in here we've got a different system, the HMRC. So it doesn't flag them, doesn't flag them. So they'll do, I think the limit in the UK is something, I think it's been lowered actually. I think it's around four, between four and six thousand pound. So they keep the deposits low and then they put them in these banks. So Michael Dario is talking about, look, we've talked about the Idaho 4 case and why the crime happened. Like, this isn't so much about pointing the finger and saying this individual did it, that individual did it. This is about, I suppose, understanding why it could have happened. Now, with respect to Brian Koberger, I am someone who, again, I don't think that it's been shown that he has done the crime to date. I don't think there's enough evidence, and what I have seen is spurious at best. And look, we've even seen 23andMe now, who was potentially involved in the Idaho 4 case and the IgG situation, they're now having problems where all of their directors or board have fucked off, they've <laughs> left them. It does seem that this has got nothing to do with the Idaho 4 case. It seems that they're having an argument with the, the chief executive officer who was looking to take 23andMe public. They want to take it public um, and they're unhappy with it. They're unhappy with it. They're unhappy with the direction the business has been taken, so they've all resigned, walked away. Is there an angle that Ann Taylor can use on that? I don't know. I, I wouldn't have thought so. I don't see the relevance in it, but who knows? Anyway, I digress. So, yeah, look, we've we've seen court documentation. If you have been doing your due diligence in the Idaho 4 case, you will have been going through the court docs. You'll have been looking at all of the things that were that were requested to be looked at. There was warrants set out. And these warrants included, as rightfully pointed out by Michael, a lot of them were financial records, bank accounts, statements, and things like that. And it, it's very strange, it's very unusual in a case of this nature for there to be such a focus on so many of the financial records of victims. And we also heard Steve Gonsalves way back when who was saying about things being sick. You know, it is sick. Some of the things that, as if he was pointed out, that you're going to, throughout this, you are going to learn certain things. And that's going to make people feel a certain way. But this is about, look, it is what it is. You've got to fucking rip the band-aid off and just crack on and move forward. Because ultimately, whatever these people are into, it doesn't mean that they deserve to happen what happened to them. You know, we're not saying that. We're not going to say that if, like... A lot of other stories have kind of been interwoven, if that's even a word, 
into the Ido 4 case, we've heard Hudson Lindau's name come up. We've heard Hannah Cleary's name turn up. You know, both seemingly, I'd say Hudson Lindau's death slightly more kind of suspicious. Um, Hannah Cleary, seemingly, she lost her life due to overdosing on over-the-counter sleep medication, and that was seemingly supported by Scott Clary, her father. Now, we've heard a lot of stuff in the background that would suggest that perhaps she was being bullied by one of the victims in the Idaho 4 case, and it's been further suggested that this could have potentially been, um, I don't know, some sort of retribution over that. And at the end of the day, the Idaho 4 case did happen for a reason. You know, especially if it wasn't Brian Koberger who did the crime. You know, you can't have your cake and eat it. You can't turn around and say that I don't believe that Brian Koberger did this crime and then not take into consideration that means that someone else did it and there would have been a reason behind that. Now, we have in the past toyed with the likelihood that it could have been the repercussions from the fight that potentially happened. And I say potentially because we don't know 100%, but... We have had that confirmed by the likes of Zana Knodal's mum. So you would hope that there is some accuracy in that. But there are a lot of moving pieces in that. We we could turn around even at this point and say, look at the Timmy Reid situation. Like, that only got brought into the public domain because Timmy Reid's family felt that the college weren't dealing with it, it wasn't being dealing with, so they sought legal action themselves privately, and that kind of forced their hand. But ever since then, we've heard nothing about it whatsoever. So look, if Timmy Reid had have been killed that night when he was attacked by 50 of the Idaho University students going to his house to kick the shit out of him, would we have even known anything? Would that have gone in a certain direction? Who knows? Who knows? We can, we can only speculate. But no, so with respect of this Smurfin, is there valid evidence that would suggest that this is a potential... We've seen the likes of Pavarotti. He's a he's a good man. He's a good guy. Um, he has spoke at length regarding potential narcotics connections to the murders of the Idaho Four, and has shown compelling evidence that there could indeed be a connection. But look, what we do know is that we had young people, young people who seemingly were doing okay for themselves. We had Kaylee Gonsalves, for instance, driving around in a Range Rover Evoque. Now, I had previously kind of boo-pooed the idea that they were acquired through ill-gotten gains, but I would have to be naive to think that there is not a potential for that to happen. I just, at that time, I didn't think that that was really a thing. But ultimately, look, the truth is we simply don't know. That is the truth. We, we, we genuinely don't know what happened and we don't know why it happened. But there is evidence to suggest that everything is being looked at. Maybe the prosecution is struggling to find the reason why it happened. Maybe that is the missing piece. Maybe that is the missing piece. Because let's not forget that Brian Koberger, even if he was guilty, he would not be helping them. He would not be helping point them in the right direction. So if they are missing elements that they... They don't necessarily need, but would massively help, then they have got to do that on their own. So are they still seeking that link between killer and victim? And will that link be found? And if they find it, will it in fact take them on a journey in a different direction? But let me know what you think. Do you think that the Idaho Four were indeed killed because of narcotics connections now we've come down this far down the road and you've seen the documents that you've seen you've seen the um the warrants that you've seen and the things that are being requested is that indeed indicative that they are digging into the the financials of the victims to see whether there is potential connections to a criminal underworld and that this was indeed the repercussions of wronging the wrong person let me know down below and I'll catch you all in the next one.